The following presentation is brought to you by the National Basketball League of Canada. NBL Canada is the country's longest running professional basketball league. Hi everyone and welcome to Around the NBLC. I'm Paige McGowan. And I'm Ian Jodry. It's been almost two years since we've had NBLC basketball, so to say we're excited for the return, well, that would be an understatement. We're super excited to bring you the latest from around the league, including stories from players, coaches, and everything that makes the NBLC so unique. With opening day on February 21st, there's a ton to talk about, but instead of telling you ourselves, we caught up with VP of Basketball Ops, Audley Stevenson. Welcome, Audley. How's it going? It is great to be here in the house of Paige and Ian, man. How you guys doing? We're good. Awesome. You good, Ian? Great to have you. Yeah, yeah it's great, great to be to here, guys. It's awesome. So this is like the first episode of the season. The very first one. Not bad. And look at the honor. You're here. First oh, one. Man. It is It is a complete honor. Thanks, guys. This is awesome. It would have felt wrong, I think, kicking it off with anybody else. Wouldn't have felt right. I'm glad you see yeah. it that way. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. This is a great place to get your confidence boosted. I'm going to make sure you come here once every every month or so. And, you know, exactly. feel good about myself. Thanks, guys. That's what we're here for. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get right into the questions. Uh, we got a couple ones for you. Sure. All right. So there's a ton to look forward to with the NBLC returning to play this year. What are you personally most looking forward to? You know, you know, we've been away from doing this thing that we love for the last two years. Uh, it's been such a long time. It really, really has. And being able to, you know, be in our arenas again, uh, interact with fans, uh, the players, uh, you know, watching, you know, watching our game, the high, and we know at a high level, you know, that our players compete at. So being able to watch them be a part of that. Um, you know, when, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you don't have something uh, and you don't have it for a considerable period of time, you really appreciate it. And when you, when you don't have it, how much you, you know, the, the, that thing that you love, that you enjoyed, that was a part of your, at least for me, I can say from my perspective, a part of my being, my fiber, it seemed like. Uh, when I didn't have that, I got to tell you, I told a friend not too long ago that, you know, when we stopped play back in 2020, I almost felt like I was going through like a mini depression. Because all of a sudden, that thing that I loved, that I enjoyed, that I was a part of for the last 10 years, you know, the rug was pulled out from not just myself, but all of us. And, you know, we had to figure out how to move ahead without it. So, you know, uh, personally, I'm thrilled. I'm ecstatic. Uh, I'm so happy for, for everyone that's a part of our game, that love it as much as I do, to be a, to be a part of it again. Uh, from our, our players, our fans, our announcers, our, our podcast hosts, our referees, our owners, our officials, the score table, all of those individuals, they're a big part of our, a big part of our league. And so uh, for all of them to have the chance to, you know, be part of our game again, it's, it's just really, really exciting. It was definitely a tough two years for everyone, but, you know, like you mentioned, having something taken away from you that you love so much and is such a big part of your life, obviously that's really tough. Now, when it comes to actually getting back to the return to play, what was that process? Like, obviously, all the government restrictions, you know, then you've got all the your usual responsibilities on top of that, booking arenas, scheduling. So, you know, what was that process like, you know, getting back to where we are with the season about to start again? And, you know, what were some of the, you know, some of the bigger challenges that you ran into along the way? I mean, being able to land on when we could actually start, I mean, you know, you know, February 21st family days, you know, the actual start date of when we, we played, but you know, it was supposed to be February 5th. Uh, it was supposed to be early January. It was supposed to be December. Like we had to keep changing it um, because of this pandemic thing. And we didn't know how, you know, we, you know, we can speculate and guess when we thought or when we, you know, we think it might be okay, but we, you know, we didn't know. 
And so that, that was a big, that was a challenging part of it. Uh, you talk about scheduling, that's hard because you're projecting when you think you might play and you're pro projecting, you know, a, a arena availability and you're planning for that. And all of a sudden that changes and you gotta go back to the drawing board again. So it was, it was a really long involved process, but be able to sort of figure out, honestly, I think the biggest challenge is sort of figuring out, you know, when we could actually play that worked for everybody. Because, you know, individual teams had, you know, d different challenges. Uh, some markets, some venues were busier than others. And so the more busier venues that also had, you know, whether it be OHL or concerts or other types of events, you know, we're now competing with those sorts of you know, nights and dates. And, you know, we all want our Fridays and Saturdays, um, but there's only so much for other, there's only two in a week last time I checked on my calendar. So, you know, we had to look at our alternate days of the week that, you know, maybe we, we you know, Mondays or Tuesdays, although they weren't favorable, we had to consider them. So it was a lot of that, that, that logistical piece and working through that and trying to get everyone, and when I say everyone, all of our teams to the point where we were, you know, we were on the same page, it, it, it wasn't easy. It was, it was a tough process. A, a, a lot of late nights for sure, no doubt about that. <laughs> And, you know, for sure, uh, some of the things that you have to consider while, you know, getting the league started up again is the fans. So what is a message that you have to the fans of the league that have been waiting for this for almost two years? Two words, we're back. Uh, I mean, that's, that's, that's first and foremost, we're absolutely back. We're thrilled to be out there again. And, 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 and you know, another big message is, you know, you're, you're going to see uh, an NBL Canada like you've never seen before. Uh, you're going to see things this league is doing that we've never done before. Um, you know, we, 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 in, in my viewpoint, you know, we've got a lot of ground to make up. You know, we've lost two years, and so we're going to make that all back up, and we're doing it this year. Um, and, and, you know, you, you combine that with the fact that we're celebrating, you know, our 10th anniversary season, you know, in some ways, it's a kind of like a perfect storm, right? That we're now returning after two years, we're doing it celebrating year number 10, and we're going to do things in a big way. So, yeah, the, the theme of this year, if I were to say, you know, the theme of this year, it's all about celebration. Celebration, what we've done, uh, uh, you know, that we're here and what we're about to do. It's, it's all about celebration. So you talk about the exciting things and what's coming, all kinds of different things that we're going to see this year. The first one that sticks out is, of course, you know, the partnership with the TBL. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I would ask you how that all got started, but it's no secret, obviously, with, you know, your relationship with David Magley. Yeah, so I guess what was the process like of that starting up? How did that all come about? And, uh, you know, what can we look forward to with that? You know, you know what? Uh, I, I talk to Mags all the time. Uh, David Magley, as you know, he was a commissioner. He started as the, the co head coach and general manager of the Brampton A's for two years. Um, I, I, I lived in Brampton, and so, you know, the fact that the team was nearby, I was able to spend a lot of time with the team and hence spent a lot of time with him. And that's where our relationship really started to grow. Um, after his two years in Brampton, he moved over into the role as league commissioner. And I, I was already working with the league, as you already know. And, 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 you know, that gave us an opportunity to work even closer together. And, you know, in, in, in some respects, I would say that uh, he certainly had a, he, he indirectly uh, had a hand and played a part in, in, you know, me being where I am now and doing the, doing the work that I do now. Um, you know, we had, we, we, you know, back in those days, uh, you know, David and I had a lot of late nights and early mornings and we chatted about stuff and uh, I was almost like a sounding board and his ideas. And, you know, we, we really, you know, we, we really had a really, really good friendship, working relationship on top of the friendship. And so, um, you know, it, that, that's the backdrop. So we've always been, we're always in communication. I drop my text, hey, how you doing? Hey, what's up? He checking with us uh, during the pandemic, same kind of thing. We were always back and forth. And, and literally, literally, I think there was a, an exchange where it was like, yo, how cool would it be if we played each other? That's, that's kind of like, that's how simple it was. Um, and, you know, and everything else kind of just fell into place. And, and for us, when, you, you know, I can't think, of, of like, when, when you walk into this sort of relationship, you know, where you got two, two independent leagues that are working together. And I want to say 
to in, and I stress independent leagues because you know there's a, there's a misconception that we're merging or we're forming into one or it, we are two independent leagues that are working together. Uh, we have tremendous amount of respect for one another. Uh, we've had a number of TBL players come into our league and play. Uh, guys like Xavier Moon, AJ Gaines, uh, they've all played in our league. Uh, J Jonathan Lloyd was the Allen Storm, uh, and they've all played in his league and they've come into our league. So, you know, we're two independent leagues working together, uh, wanting to do something really special. Uh, and, you know, and, you know, really special for year. I go back to doing something special for year number 10. You know, that was, in the for that was on the forethought of our minds. And and it just it just it just made sense. And in all honesty, you know, when you've got someone that you you, you respect, know, like, and trust, it's really easy to get in the business with them, right? Because you know that they got your best interest, much like you know we have theirs. So it's a great, honestly, it's a great, great partnership. Um, the you know the best thing about it is that sky is the limit. You know, it can it can it can, it can morph into all sorts of wonderful things. Uh, you know. You know, even you know, we announced the All Star, you know, joint All Star weekend a couple weeks ago. That wasn't necessarily something on you know on the top of my mind at that time. But it's kind of thrown out as a hey, wouldn't this be kind of cool if sort of scenario? And lo and behold, that's what we're doing. So I think there's a lot of great things that can happen. Uh, and I think the best part about it is we're just we're both open. There's no hidden agendas here. Again, when you got someone that you know, like, trust, and respect, uh, it's really easy to get in these types of ventures with them. So really excited about that one. Uh, so Adley, you were talking about the, you know, how easy it was to get started in this, but you know, when you're doing something for the first time, there's obviously going to be challenges. So I'm yeah. curious to know what some of the challenges uh, were to getting this started with the TBL, the collaboration. Yeah, I mean, look, we're still working through them. I mean, you know, they 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 have uh, uh, different programs. How they, you know, uh, capture their stats, for example. They do things slightly different. Um, there there's some slight rule changes. You know, being an American League, we're FIBA, so there's slight rule changes. Things are done differently. Um, you know, the 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 COVID. Uh, 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 um, piece adds a wrinkle and dynamic because now we got to get into figuring out what testing looks like and it can't be rapid it's got to be antigen and that kind of stuff now you know the rules have changed that may have eased that up a bit so you know that, that that's that's a positive thing but you know it's funny it's just a lot of little things things that you may not necessarily have uh, uh thought but yeah by all means they you know, there's, 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 there's little things and we're still working through them, but certainly nothing that I, uh, w would impact our ability to, to move forward. Well, it looks like you had some good news with, uh, testing restrictions being eased, um, in about two weeks. So we talk about, of course, adding teams, not merging, but adding teams in terms of NBL Canada team schedules this year. But we of course also lost some teams with the Atlantic division being taken away. Tons of loyal fans out there, as you know, for, all those fans of the league out there that are, of course, you know, looking forward to when they'll have those markets back. You know, what message would you have for those fans on the East Coast? You know, if if you look at the uh, you know the, the the foundation of this league, and, and and Ian, you know, you've been around this league for a real long time, and you know all about the loyal East Coast fans. And uh, quite frankly, uh, you know, they were the backbone of this league in the early days in terms of getting things going and off the ground and running with it. And so uh, we, we recognize, we know our history. There's no question about that. We, we, we know where, you know, where, 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 uh, uh, you know where, where true fans are at and where they started. And so, you know, we don't take that for granted. It was, it, it was a tough, regrettable, uh, unfortunate series of situations. Um, certainly the pandemic had a, you know, a part to play in that as well. Uh, but the message of fans, you know, we, we, we see, we acknowledge you, and we absolutely, you know, have every intention of being back home in the East. And that's, that's, that's our plan. You know, we, we still have two teams that are out there, uh, but just for logistical reasons, it wasn't, they weren't able to participate. So we, we haven't entirely left the East. We still have a presence there. And, you know, we plan on getting back to where we were. It'll be, it'll, it'll be a process. There's no question about that. It'll, it'll take, it'll take a lot of work as well, too because the, the, the success in any of our teams uh, is having uh, strong ownership groups as partners, right? So it's, it's got to be the right partners. Um, it, it, it makes no sense to kind of jump into something and it's just not the right situation. So, uh, but yeah, we, the message of fans is we see you and we will be back. That's our plan. <laughs> And I just want to touch back on something you briefly mentioned earlier uh, about how you're excited to bring back an all-star game. I just wanted to ask, you know, how important was it to have one during the season instead of after the season, like in the past? 
Well, again, you know, that was, was more a, a logistical sort of uh, a thing that we did there. Um, you know, the TBL does their normally does theirs in the in, in the in mid season, and so you know we're, we're looking at that. You also look at kind of we're starting later, so if we're now doing an all star game, we're in the summer when that's happening. Um, you know, and that's not sort of the an ideal time for a bunch of other logistical reasons. So you know, for us. It, 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 we, we, we looked at that option and thought, you know, it still makes sense to do. And, 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 the, and, and you know, the stars kind of came together nicely because uh, the other thing that we had is we had this gap in our schedule. And, and that gap was just as a result of venue, you know, we, we weren't able to access our venues. So we looked at that gap. We looked at when the TBL was thinking about doing something. We said, hey, let's do a joint all-star weekend on that period because we got the time and we have availability. So let's make it happen. That's awesome. Well, I remember the all-star game a couple of times from St. John and Charlottetown and how exciting it was. So thinking about those early days, you know, we met back in 2012 in St. John and, you know, the league looked a lot different back then. It was exciting. It, you know, it was yeah. very new and fresh and, yes. you know, hadn't taken full structure, but now it seems obviously there's a lot more structure to the league. It's made a name for itself. It's developed a reputation developed a brand and you know with that brand developing you've also had you know some real proud proud moments you know especially over the last year and a half from you know Xavier Moon signing the 10 day with the Clippers you know seeing former broadcasters like Megan McPeak working NBA and Olympic broadcasts you know what's it like for you to finally you know kind of see that happen and you know almost like a a mother bird in her nest watching watching her birds fly away and develop and become the beautiful thing that you always thought they could be, but it, you know, it just took time and you finally got there. Uh, I love how descriptive you get. You know, <laughs> I'm a poet, can't you tell? Hard time. <laughs> you, you know what? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so, you know, incredibly proud um, of the fact that as a league, you know, we get to be a part of individuals' careers um, at, at the ground level uh, and, and be a part of how, you know, th- th- them advancing and growing. You know, obviously, our, our players, uh, you know, you, whether they, 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 they reach the NBA like an Xavier Moon or they have a very flourishing career overseas like a Brandon Robinson, you know, to know that we were a part of uh, those careers and those individuals, it's, it's, it's thrilling. And, and, you know, it's, it's, there, there is a great deal of pride from that standpoint. So I think the, I, I, as descriptive as I mean, I've, I poke fun at your descriptive, you know, mother bird analogy, but, you know, I think it, it, it's very fitting in that sense where you let people fly off and, and, and go off and do great things. So it's nice to look back and go, yeah, you know, we were a part of that. But you also, you know, mentioned Megan McPeak and, you know, another person. So we spent so much time talking about, uh, you know, our players and opportunities for them. But, you know, at the same time, NBL Canada for the last 10 years has consistently provided opportunities for all sorts of people so we can be a part of the game at the pro game. So whether it be an announcer like Megan McPeak or uh, 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 an official that's now in the NBA or the WNBA, as example, or, um, uh, you know, scorer's table, maybe someone uh, uh, was working as a general manager, a therapist. I mean, there's just so many, you know, opportunities, coaches. I mean, there's just so many opportunities where people can grow by being a part of that game, uh, our game rather that that it's it's exciting so i always you know i i always like to see where people end up uh, so, you know one one you know there, there'll be a couple point in time where i'll say man i remember sitting down and being interviewed by Paige and ian for an nbl canada podcast now look at them right like you you you, know, you have no idea the amount of pride i'll have to know that you know we as a league were a part of that and a part of someone's journey and 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 help them uh, on their journey. I mean, there's a great deal of pride in that. So yeah, that that's 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 the thrill for me as well. And we touched on um, you know people from the past a little bit. If we're going to get more into that later, but uh, uh, you know, fans in the markets without team always like to talk about expansion. So looking into the future, are there any imminent plans to start teams in other cities? Yeah, I mean, we're we're we're, we're talking now. We're hoping. Uh, you know, the, the hope is. Um, uh, we're announcing a brand new team this season. That's the hope. We, there's a lot of logistical things that have to come into play um, uh, that we're working on, and so uh, so that so for sure we know there's a brand new one that we're we're, we're identifying. Uh, and you know, and we're always talking. Uh, we're always engaged in conversations. That that's the that seems to be an ongoing process. Um, and and, and it, quite frankly, it's a lengthy process, and I think it needs to be. 
because of the types of not only just investments that are being made, uh, you know, by you know the prospective owner, if you will, uh, but the, the, the investments in the community. The last thing that we want, you know, we want to see happen, and and, I, and I'll say this because it has happened, is or we, you know, we we go into a market and a year later we're gone again because of you know, some issue or something we didn't foresee or whatever. And so, you know, that's the other benefit when you're doing something for 10 years, you kind of get good at it, right? And you kind of learn something yeah, of course. and you recognize how to do things better. And so, um, you know, I, I, I will say that uh, there's, a, there's a new team coming, um, conversations are ongoing and they will continue that way. And it's, you know, and as soon as we can say, hey, here's what's happening, we absolutely will. I'd love to push my luck and ask where that team's going to be, but uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to get you to budge on that one. So uh, we'll, we'll move on with, uh, so obviously for, part, for part, Canadian. Part of, what? part of what? What did you say? I was just saying, I don't think oh. I'll be able to get you to budge on that one. With, oh, gotcha, uh, gotcha. With, gotcha. Uh, with any more hints. So I feel like that's already quite the, the bomb to drop on us. So uh, <laughs> big news, especially. Um, so with four Canadian teams, uh, you know, battling it out this year, uh, what's, the, what's the plan for the playoff format when things wrap up at the end of April? So all four teams will make the playoffs. We're gonna do you know two rounds. Um, we're gonna we're gonna slightly shorten the the playoff format. Uh, again, you know we're you know we don't want this thing to go on to the middle of June kind of thing, and you know potentially that is. So we're doing two rounds of five. Um, you know the first first obviously the first rounds for seeding purposes, and uh, and then you know we'll compete for a championship. I, I think the one thing that you know we're we're definitely gonna see. Uh, you know, if you were to look at, you know, by, by having four teams, you know, you're, you're, you're guaranteed to have talent at a high level on every single roster, right? So think of the quality of the play. Not, not, not that it didn't exist before, don't get me wrong, but in terms of the level of competitiveness now and, and, and the talent level, all those things, it's, it's going to be, it's concentrated. So, um, you know, I, I'm expecting out the gate. You know, our, 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 our games to be tough, competitive, exciting, um, and and something that fans get really excited about. And so, yeah, I'm 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 really intrigued on how that will all all, all materialize because uh, from what I've seen and I've had an opportunity to to visit all the teams during the training camps. You know, there's a lot of good players coming to our league and. Uh, you know, it's it's for bragging rights, right? Who, no, no player, regardless of the number of teams in a particular league, you know, the, the, what players play for doesn't change. The play to win and play for a championship. And that's what we're going to expect to see. All right. I think that's oddly, all the questions. The, uh, American oh. teams put... <laughs> Oh, Hold sorry. On, I cut you off. I cut no, you no, off. No, 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 no. I was about to ask if there was any more questions. I That's all for me. But if you have more, go right ahead. I, 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 I have I've more always questions. got more questions. All right. Oddly, keep it so going, curious, when... You guys are bickering here. It sounds like I like this kind of a. <laughs> so no, let's, hear what, let's hear what Mama Bird has to say. <laughs> <laughs> chirp, chirp. I'm ready to fly away right after. <laughs> Embarrassment. So when the Canadian teams play the American teams, will those wins still count? For the Canadian team's records and the standings towards the playoffs, they they will, yeah, they, they will. will. They won't. They won't. They, they would have no impact in, on on so sort of the TBL. But for our standings, you know, the 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 wins and losses absolutely will count for sure. The stats will count. All that will count for sure. And Paige, I promise this is the last one. What <laughs> what did you settle on rules wise? Um, you know, will the will the TBL teams be playing FIBA when they come here? Will the NBL teams be playing FIBA rules when they go down there? What was the uh, what was the final verdict? So, so be home court rules. I mean, you know, because it, it, you, you also got to think about it. You know, if you, the, the the officials too, right? You, you know, when we go down uh, to the U.S., you know, we're using U.S. officials and we're using the rules to determine that. I, I think the, the one thing thing uh, that is clear is that the um um. The, the 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 distinction between the two leagues and the set of rules used they're minimal it's it's minimal so you know i don't i don't expect there's a huge drop off or anything of that nature uh you know i expect look i i expect really you know this, this to be something special i really do and i think it's setting up setting up the fat the, the framework for you know all sorts of good things um yeah, like just, there's just a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of potential here, guys, um, and and that's a piece that that again I I keep I I, I should, we should have a, a counter for the number of times I use the word exciting, but that's the real part that's really exciting here because the potentials that you know the possibilities are endless, man, they really are. Fly us away, Paige. 
I was about to say, I was, I'm, I'm waiting for you this time. <laughs> Get this out of the case out for the first episode. I love it. You sure? You sure you don't have any more questions? I'm done. I'm good. So All let right. me ask you, what are you, what are you guys looking forward to? I mean, a guy like Ian, Paige, I think you guys got two interesting dynamics here. Paige being the first year involved with the league. Ian, you've been here as long as I've been here almost, <laughs> man. Like, uh, you've seen as much as I have almost. Uh, what, what are you looking forward to? Oh, it's getting close. I mean, aside from the obvious of just having basketball back, yeah. you know, live sports again is going to be absolutely thrilling. Yeah. Um, it almost seems, you know, like not a complete overhaul, but, you know, not quite the same amount of returning players and coaches that we would have seen in year past. You know, a turnover that I think is good for the league and good to see. Yeah. Um, and as you talked about before, new teams in the league, you know, having – you know, having uh, the TBL collaboration, I think, is awesome. The All-Star Game is always something that I really look forward to back on the East Coast, um, you know, both the skills competition and the game itself and yep. overall just the whole week and experience. So yep. things like that. But, you know, what it all comes down to is we're playing again. As you said, we're That's back. It. That's it. That's it. Um, I, I failed to mention, I also mentioned the fact that we are this year going to be launching a, a virtual Hall of Fame. And uh, uh, we think this is a, a great year, a timely year to do this, uh, year number 10. And, uh, and part of that process is uh, we'll, we'll be uh, looking at identifying and celebrating uh, the top 10 players in league history. And I think it's very fitting with our 10th year celebration. Um, it, it, it actually, it, it certainly makes for an interesting conversation. And I'm sure, Ian, you'd appreciate that with all the players that have come through our league. Uh, it makes for an interesting conversation. You say, well, who are the top 10? And, you know, it, you can go in all kinds of places and all kinds of angles. And one of the things that we're doing is we've brought in, or rather, we're we'll bringing in an external panel. So, you know, this external panel of, of individuals who have, have had past affiliations with the league, uh, have been, you know, been in the league, have known the league, uh, and be able to provide their input. So we're really excited about that as well, and something that we'll be able to launch this year. And, you know, along with all the other neat stuff, we've got, you know, new merchandise options and stuff we've created. And if you want to get yourself a, a, a 10-year official uh, ball with a logo on it, we can do that too. There's all kinds of just really neat stuff. And, you know, I think one of the focuses we really want – um, this year, like I said off the top, this year to be a celebration and a celebration with the fans. That's, that's really what it's going to be. And so you're, I, I think the fans are going to see stuff that they've never seen before. Like I said, you know, you, you know the, the way we started off year one with Around the NBLC podcast with the two of you, uh, that's a new dynamic and one I'm looking forward to watching you guys as you evolve and grow throughout the year. So, um, yeah, this is, like, guys, it's celebration. It's going to be a great year. I cannot wait. Um, going back to the Hall of Fame, I know you said that it's going to be the top 10 players announced. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what we're looking at. That's top the idea. Players. So will that be announced all at once or is the plan to release one player, you know, by week? What's, uh, uh, what's the plan for what's the grand unveil? We're, we're, we're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna go back to the committee and talk about that a bit. We've been bouncing around a couple of things. We're talking about maybe doing the unveiling the week of leading up into the All Star weekend, and maybe we trickle them out that week, kind of a thing. So there's, you know, there's a couple of options, but yeah, we're, you know, it, 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 I mean, the, what we know for certain is that it will happen, and it needs to happen, and it's important because part of, you know, part of celebration is recognition. And, uh, you know, our league, you know, we, we owe a tremendous amount to our players. Uh, oddly, Stevenson doesn't make NBL Canada. I'm a big part of it for sure. Uh, our players, I give them all the credit. And when I look at the players of past that have been a big part of our foundation and us building, uh, I think it's only fitting that we recognize them in this fashion. Uh, I'm wondering for the for the top 10 players that you guys are going to pick, is it uh, like, what's the criteria? Is it going to be, are you looking at them at overall or are we looking at specific stuff like, you know, yeah, defense, so, offense? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be things like impact on the league, obviously, uh, um, success in league, winning is a factor, um, representative league values. Uh, so it'll be a three or four items that we've identified that are important um, that, you know, that we, you know, that we feel uh, uh, captures and we want players that capture the spirit of NBL Canada. Um, you know, we've had, you know, we've had, we, we, we've had a lot of great players come in our league and, you know, they're gone after a year. 
well, you know, that's great and you're, you're, you're super talented, but we kind of think there's more to it than just a one and done player, so to speak, right? So there's that kind of stuff that we, we, we've sort of identified and we do have, you know, we do have the criteria sort of laid out and, and you know, we, 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 we certainly will, we, we're going to share that uh, publicly once we finish the process. But yeah, it's, it's stuff like that. It's, and, and so it's more, it, it, it'll, it'll, it'll so, so absolutely, Paige, you know, your skill on the court and what you've done on the court absolutely is important but it's going to also evolve into other aspects too of course yeah that makes sense cool ian i'm flat out <laughs> done you, you guys, sure for now you guys for now. Make this we'll, we'll get we'll get you back again so you know kind sure. of save it a bit you know yeah, same same question. Question. ration the questions. Got you, got you, got you, got you. Next you, time we'll you introduce know, you as mom. Never want to run out of questions, right? You never want to run out. It's never run out. out. And not to mention next time, you know, we'll actually have some games under our belt to talk about, which will be true. Hey, imagine that. Imagine <laughs> that. Imagine that. I haven't been able to say that in a while. So. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. No so kidding. right now we're talking to Mama Bird, and next time we'll be talking to Oddly Stevenson. <laughs> Understood. Understood. <laughs> I hear he's an okay guy. I, I heard that too. More than okay. All right. Cool. That's what we're here for. Awesome. To blow your head up. The, that's the podcast. <laughs> Oddly, thanks so much for doing this. Really appreciate uh, you giving us this yeah. time and, you know, terrific insight as always. And, you know, if, if fans weren't excited enough, you know, myself included, I, they're going to be fired up after watching this episode. Well, that's a yeah. given. That I've done my job. And so thank you. Uh, thank you guys uh, for, for doing this. Um, you know, again, w w one of, you know, one of our uh, strategies and we talked about internally a lot is, is, is content creation. Uh, and so we, you know, we've said, we put the pedal to the metal and we said, we're going full board. And so you guys are a big part of what, you know, as much as I talk about our success, you know, you guys and what we want to do to be successful this year, you guys are part of this plan with this podcast. So thank you, uh, for what you've done up to this point and what you're about to do as well. It's going to be an awesome year. Yeah. Thanks for having us. I'm excited. Can't thanks wait. for having me guys. Of course. Anytime. You're welcome whenever. Well, that's it for this week. Keep tuning in for all the best stories on and off the court. We'll catch you next week for Around the NBLC on NBLC.TV.